as a result of an issue. She kicks off her campaign here. Class horse of the race is a dual Group 1 winner. Her best form, though, has been at Flemington over 1,200 metres. Maybe the hillside shoot's going to suit, but she has to give way away to some pretty sharp horses. It wouldn't shock me to see her run well. Such is her class, but it's a tough ask. Looks fantastic in the yard. She's a well-built mare. She's got a lot of power. Her coat's an exceptional order, and she's bringing the usual energy she does to race day. Two Lombardo are scratching, likely to pop up in next week's Canterbury Stakes in Sydney to the three. Mars Crusader, who returns... His best is outstanding. You feel like a high-tempo Oakley plate with a wide draw might suit. Had a couple of jump outs. The latest was really encouraging. He has been below his best for much of his last two preparations. But if he could find his best form from 2021, he'd go very close to storming over the top of them late. His best is good enough and the jump outs were encouraging. The way he's presenting in the yard, that, can, that suggests he won't run up to his best. Uh, he's in super order. I think he's quite forward in terms of his fitness. He's his usual relaxed self, and he looks exceptional in the coat. He's got one of the richest, deepest coats in the mounting yard, so it'd be nice to see him return to form. Blake Shin chasing a Group 1 double to close the day. He's aboard the four, the astrologist. A couple of jump outs since winning the Gold Rush in Western Australia. He's really tough. I just don't know if he's suited at 1,100 against this class of field with 56.5 kilos. I'd rather see him over first. The, maybe at Flemington. Came back carrying out a little bit of weight in the spring, so he needed a few runs to get to peak fitness. I think the team have got him quite forward for his first up assignment here today. Five, King of Sparta does have race fitness and winning form via the Falvalon and the Magic Me in Sprint. Yeah, very good dry tracker, so he'd be happy that somehow the rain's hit everywhere else in Melbourne, but not Sandown today. He's won his last two starts in Queensland impressively. He's going to need a lot of luck from the barrier, and this is much stronger than the races he's been winning. I think he'd probably need to produce a career peak performance, and I can't get him as short as the market. He does look good in the yard, though he's the right type of horse for this race. He's balanced, he's very strong, he's got that real speed physique. Love his mannerisms, he doesn't put a foot wrong. Two seconds, two thirds in the Melbourne Spring Carnival for Horse 6 Zoo style. Really fast sprinter. I actually think he might be able to cross and lead from an outside gate here. There's not as much speed as you'd usually associate with an Oakley plate. He's five from nine first up, he's trialled well. The end of 1100 in this class of race is the query. He's very forward in condition though, so the team have shown some intent in the way he's been prepared for this. Harry Coffey rides the 7 Marine 1. He won the Rubiton last year. Hadn't been seen since running in this year's edition when fourth. Really encouraging run first up, given he had the top weight of 58 kilos. He'll be fitter for that. He drops five kilos. Look, I think he needs to produce a new career peak, but he maps for a soft run. He'll... I've got a few ahead of him, but... You know, there's a definite case to be made that he can outperform the, the, his current price in the market of $26. He has improved out of his first up assignment. Whether that improvement's enough to feature here is the question. Well, there's been a bit of a jockey merry-go-round going on. And it's meant that Ben Thompson gets an opportunity to come back to Melbourne and ride a really strong chance here in the Oakley Plate in the eight Uncommon James. He was aboard Booker for fourth in this race five years ago. Yeah, and he's had a bit of an association with Uncommon James in the past. He's won a couple as well. So I, I, the fact that he knows the horse, and I like the lofty strike form. So this horse guy, he's going to strip a little bit fitter right around the race. She's got an imposing record from seven starts with five wins in two seconds. He's got to be in the game. Physically, I like the way he's returned this preparation. He's a stronger horse, so that should hold him in good stead. But he was quite forward first up, only taking natural improvement into this. But he's certainly been parading like a horse that's feeling well. It's been a long-range target for Ballarat-based trainer Henry Dwyer here with Horse 9 Asfura. The mares have been outstanding in this race in recent years. Her last two runs were just that in the Caulfield Sprint and the Begonia Bell. Yeah, only defeats in eight starts have been one in the Kevin Hayes as a three-year-old filly at 1,200 on a fast speed, and then when she was desperately unlucky at the Valley last preparation, she should get a nice run on or just behind the speed. She's been targeted to peak in this race. She's jumped out well. I think she's short enough, given she's first up at 1,100 metres, and she's got some good ones chasing her, but she looks a good chance. She used to do a lot wrong in terms of her mounting yard parade, getting herself uh, a bit hot and warm in the yard, and she's just got better every preparation. In terms of her overall behaviour, I think this is the best I've seen her parade. She's been beautifully settled since the moment she walked into the yard, so a good sign for her, this preparation. Ten lofty strike, trying to join the ranks of Portland Sky, Star Spangled Banner and Fast Net Rock as a three-year-old colt to win the Oakley Plate. Based on the Rubiton, he can. Yeah, he showed huge promise as a two-year-old, and based on that first up run, he's ready to deliver on that promise, this preparation. Huge win first up, clear fastest last 200 metres of the meeting once he got clear. This has been the target, the whole preparation. Um, I think dry ground's the key to him. He's a big chance, I've got him on top. 
he's tightened up really nicely with a run under his belt and he did have a little bit of improvement to come when he paraded last start. He also melted in the yard. He was dripping in sweat by the time he left. He's had uh, a little bit of a sweat today. He's got a bit of a warm patch in his flank, but uh, by far a much better parade today than what we saw first up. 11 Chain of Lightning was perhaps the unlucky runner in the Rubiton. Hutch and draws in again. Well, it's that lofty strike form and he's just gone favourite and she was terrific on that occasion and she's actually co-second favourite at this point in time. So once again, that's the form that I like. You had to love her run and with the right run through the race again today for, for Craig Williams uh, could easily win it. She's just a complete package in the yard, this man. Not only is she physically furnished and strong and mature, she's also mentally uh, has the capacity to cope so well with race day pressure. She's another one that's improved really nicely off the back of her first up parade as well. Second of the O'Day hoisted runners is the 12 shooting for gold, and he was second in the Magic Mean Sprint to King of Sparta. He was. 1,100 metres looks his sweet spot. He beat Generation and Star Patrol over 1,100 in the spring. I will say that was soft ground, which didn't favour Star Patrol, but... Um, Right distance, I just think others have got stronger form. He's a, a horse that's certainly built for speed and he generally brings pretty good energy to the yard, normally like a coiled spring ready to go off. But for him, I actually think he's come back a little bit more settled this preparation. So uh, the way he's handled himself uh, in the yard today, certainly it gives him a big tick. Since her defeat behind Passive Aggressive and Star Patrol in the Kresik, Last June, I am me, horse 13 is undefeated. Yeah, fall from fall, this preparation has been running fast times in winning those races. Gets Jamie Carr, gets 52 kilos, can make her own luck on or near the speed, but this is by far her toughest test. And I don't love barrier one in big fields uh, from the, the 1100 or just, you know, from the hillside shoot as a rule anyway. They can sometimes be favouring wider draws, but. She's on an upward spiral and it's hard to know her ceiling. Yeah, you've got to love a mirror in form, don't you? Uh, she's got terrific composure in the mounting yard. Obviously, she's had racing under her belt. She's nice and fit and um, I just like her mannerisms. Uh, she's um, a horse that, is, again, is not at all concerned uh, about race day competition and she has really put her best foot forward in the yard today. Philip Stokes with two runners on the minimum in the Oakley Plate. The first of them, the mare, horse 14, Maliva, has... A sensational fresh record. Yeah, first up specialist that's jumped out impressively, but this is her toughest test and I think it will probably be a bit too tough for her. She's well enough prepared if she's good enough. 15 Star Patrol is another who's in on a long range Oakley Plate campaign and he was super on Australia Day here in the Adams. Yeah, he was a dominant winner first up at a distance that's probably short of his best. He's a really progressive sprinter. His time's last preparation suggested he'd get to this level. He gets here today on firm ground, which is the key to his best form, and I think he's really dangerous and a key chance with 52 kilos. He's kept a really cool head in the yard, which I think is really important for him, and he's tightened up really nicely off the back of his first up performance. Godolphin present another four-year-old mare here in the 16, Zapateo, who perhaps could have and should have had the measure of Esfura in the Begonia Bell. Absolutely flies first up, was unlucky not to beat Esfura before a spell at Flemington too. Whether she's at her best on firm ground is my main concern. Maybe if we've got six minutes of rain time, maybe she won't have to worry about firm ground because it's just, the heavens have just opened, which is a positive for her. She's moving really well in the yard and she comes to the races in really good order for her first up run. The bottom three emergencies are out. The one who gets a run is the second of the Stokes Gallopers, the 17 Shimino, the Chris Mistake second on Boxing Day was a good pointer to this race. Their yeah, last start winner and has a big finish on his day. I thought he was pretty good coming from last at this track and distance um, in the Christmas stakes. And he, he then went on with it winning last time. But uh, he'd probably need to go to a new level and do that as a seven-year-old at his you know, 47 start to be winning this. He's hard fit and he's produced what I would describe as a typical parade from him. He just drops his head and wanders around, conserves his energy nicely. But there are others I prefer based on their parade. It's an Oakley plate, the likes of which we've never seen, and it's 139 year history. It's going to be run out of the hillside chute. They'll go 80 metres past the traditional winning post here at Sandown, run past three shipping containers where the 
Reverse camera is for the photo finish, and you feel like it might be needed for this year's Ladbrokes Oakley plate. May well do. Uh, I was surprised all week. Lofty strike had been double figures. I'm not surprised the money's come for him today. That was a huge win first up, and this has been his target. Star Patrol, he, he put the rod in the wall last preparation that he's a very good horse. He likes dry ground, as does Lofty Strike. They get it today, uh, and I think he's a big hope. Uncommon James started 280 against Lofty Strike first up. You get $9 now. Might have just needed that run. Chain of Lightning maybe should have beaten Lofty strike. The inside draw is my little concern but she's got the quality, Hutch. Yeah, I'm seeing it very similarly, uh, Benny, so give them strength. The Lofty Strike, Star Patrol, Chain of Lightning and I Am Me. Chain of Lightning on top the 11, as I said in the yard she's just the complete package, she's physically mature, she's mentally mature, she moves well in the yard, she just does everything right and I like the improvement that she's taken out of her first up run so she goes on top Lofty Strikes another one that has presented so much better than his first up parade, he's tighter in condition he hasn't melted like he did last time so that holds him in good stead I've gone with the 11 ahead of the 10 here and Star Patrol, he's another one that's improved nicely and kept himself relaxed tough race, chain of lightning on top And the moment's arrived, Henry. Uh, how are the nerves? No, we're here, Nigel. It's uh, all gone pretty smoothly. So when things go wrong and you're chasing your tail, it can be a bit nerve-wracking, but I think we're, we've done what we need to do, and it's up to Jai now. You've got a good handle on what it takes to bring a mare to the race. You had Cindy Kitty run so well for you a few years ago. How do you go benchmarking what Asfura's has done today? Uh, I've always said she's the, the better horse and more dimensional. Cindy Kitty was very one-dimensional and got run down late in Oakley Plate. This filly can settle off him if need be. Not saying she will, but she may. Uh, yeah, I, I just think she's kept improving and she will keep improving, I'd say. One of the key things around your confidence and I guess targeting this race is she does have some versatility to handle if things don't unfold accordingly in the early stages for dry? Yeah, absolutely. We sat one out, one back at uh, Caulfield one day. I mean, three-year-old company, obviously, but just she drops the bridle wherever she is. She's happy to travel and can quicken off a quick tempo. So that's her strength. Uh, negatives will be found out after this race, whether it's a 1,100 first up or a, a, a hill at the end of it or, or whatever it is, but she's in as good a order as she can possibly be. And, uh, you know, she'll run as well as she can. If it's good enough, it's good enough. If it's not, it's not. Good luck, Henry. Thanks, Nigel. Cheers. I wish him uh, all the very best of luck with Asphora and uh, Charlotte. They've made their way around the sprinters and it seems as though this rain's pretty much stayed away as well. Yeah, we've had obviously a light sprinkling uh, for a little while now, but uh, I don't think it's made too much of an indent into the track. I still think it's going to be, be a pretty fast track there. And uh, just looking at these horses parading beautifully behind the barriers here, there's not a lot of room, um, but they're all keeping it nicely under wraps. I had a quick chat with Ben Thompson. It's really good to see him down here riding. He rode a lot of winners for me when he was based in Victoria, and uh, he gets the ride on Uncommon James, who just looks outstanding, this Cable Bay gelding. He's just a lovely horse so I, uh, I hope for Benny's sake that he can get this horse over the line but another one very f I'm very fond of is Lofty Strike and this horse presents beautifully I went upside him towards the barriers and uh, Craig knew it's got this horse down pat and he uh, he just rides him ha and handles him so beautifully on the way down here he's got a beautiful stride his trot was very electric and uh, the horse looks really switched on very free in his movement so he's certainly uh, a good horse behind here to give a push to and he's keeping it together a lot more this time round too. As Jane said in the mounting yard, he didn't melt. He completely melted last time. He was having to have a big tail down, but uh, the tail's not there today. And Craig looks switched on, ready to run. Um, all right, there we have it. Uh, won't be too far away from uh, starting to load up, Benny. As we thank Charlotte for all her efforts today. And well, how good is it the racing at Sandown today, Ben? Big yep. track. I mean, the vast, vast majority of horses all getting their opportunity. Let's hope that's the case again in the big one. Yeah, there's just a couple of hard luck stories in the Blue Dime, which we'll dissect tomorrow. We've, of course, got the wrap on Racing.com. Speedwise here, I think Zoo Style looks your likely leader. There is that saying they'll go like Oakley Platers. It'll be interesting to see from the shoot start on the hillside track whether they do this year. And outside of Zoo Style, as Fura, Maliva, the astrologist, I me can be up there, but. I don't know if it's as much speed as a usual locally play. Anyway, we'll see. Hopefully yeah. they prove me wrong. And a quick thought for Matt Hill, of course, I think was going to call this from a slightly different spot given where the winning post is. So he's done a superb job all day and wish him all the very best for the last. Here's Matt Hill. Lamberge.
So a great spectacle here. Spectators from the 300 metre mark all the way down towards the second winning post. They must spread five or 600 metres here for this unique running of the Ladbrokes Oakley Plate. As Fura goes into the stalls, Zoo Style along with Star Patrol to take their places. As Mars Crusader goes in, they're just about right as Star Patrol and also Zoo Style are going to be the final two. Maleva also joining them. So Star Patrol, the last start winner, trained by Clinton McDonald. Can Michael D make it a double group one after winning the diamond? Star Patrol is in, and Zoo Style is going to be the final one. And the field is now locked away. The Ladbrokes Oakley played at 1100, the 139th running. Set to go. They stand pretty well. Starter has them. Ready. Gates are back and racing and uncommon James towards the outside broke quickly with Zoo Style and Zapateo isn't too far away. Marine One and also Star Patrol show out and they were followed by Rock and Horse who got to about fifth with Asfura. Back in the pack then at this stage of the race was shooting for gold Chain of Lightning. Also well back the astrologist Lofty Strike, King of Sparta, Shimino and Mars Crusader. Zoo Style going like the wind around the corner of the 700. Three links uncommon James I am me chain of lightning marine one as Führer up the middle further back in the field then Maleva star patrol shooting for gold king of Sparta Zapateo from rock and horse lofty strike then came Shimino zoo style approaching the 352 links in front of uncommon James followed by as Führer I am me plugs on marine one and king of Sparta is trying to get a run towards the inside uncommon James and as Führer up to zoo style it's kicking uncommon James in the middle uncommon James grabs as Führer uncommon James James holding on and won the Oakley Plate. Lofty strike up for second from Asfura, King of Sparta. And they were followed next in the field behind them by Zoo Stoll, who got tired. Chain of Lightning, Marine One pull up quickly, followed by shooting for gold. Next in the field, Star Patrol, Zapateo, Rock and Horse, Maleva, Mars Crusader, the Astrologist, and one of the last, Shimino. A spectacular Oakley Plate, as we expected, and pure joy for Ben Thompson across the line. It's a game of sliding doors. Ethan Brown was supposed to ride Uncommon James. Rock and Horse's presence in the weights scattered things. Brown ends up on Zoo Style. Ben Thompson comes down, takes the ride on Uncommon James. Damien Lane, of course, has had the association. He's in the Middle East for the Saudi Cup tonight. And Ben Thompson's a Group 1 winning jockey in the iconic Oakley Plate. They've run 101.57, so what about 1.25 quicker than they did in the Rubiton won by Lofty Strike a couple of weeks ago. And it was a searing tempo set up by Zustal, who speared across from the outside. Great runs Lofty Strike and Asfura, but their group one day may still be to come. 8, 10, 9 and 5 in an Oakley plate for the ages. Yeah, one to remember that is for sure. And what a moment to remember for young Ben Thompson. Made the most of a fantastic opportunity. They met again today, uh, Ben, Uncommon James and Lofty Strike and the tables were turned. Well, last time it was two eighty versus $8 and the market just wanted to be with Uncommon James. This time you got the better price and I just think the difference was they're settling positions early. Um, but... Lofty strikes been enormous. It might have been the run of the race. They're both very good sprinters. And look at what it means here to Ben Thompson out the back hatch. Um, he's just taking some time to compose himself and, and soak it all in. It's just fantastic pictures there. Uh, our good racing person there in Ben Thompson. Well, let's head to Nigel, who's got some winning connections. Drama Matthew Hoisted. Ben Thompson story is one half of the returning Victorians. Matt standing on home soil and winning an iconic race, what's it mean? Yeah, I can't really put it into words. I think it's really, really sunk in. Look, just so proud of this horse. Look, obviously he's um, got a bit of a family connection, obviously with, with my in-laws sort of breeding him, with my wife breeding him and, and sort of owning him and just so, <coughs> so proud of the, no, our big team at home, like, you know, for Steve and myself, we're obviously the front of this, but it's a big team behind us making this work and, um, Look, just knew he had so much improvement in him coming in here first up the last week. He's just improved out of sight. And, um, you know, all credit to Ben. It was a great ride. For, navigated that wide gate nice and early. And, um, you know, the sky's just a limit. He's still learning what he's doing this horse. So hopefully we can 
a fair bit of fun in the next 12 months. It was on the table that he was the nominal favourite for a Sarupa Clark six months ago and things obviously didn't prevail that way. But in some respects, the fact that he would be more than capable holding his own in Group 1s over 1,400, did you feel like that was always going to be something really important for such a test in an Oakley plate like this? Definitely. Look, obviously it was devastating having to pull up stumps when, when he was going so well last time in. But uh, look, obviously he comes first and we knew there was there was so much more improvement. So there was no, no point risking him or pushing forward in the preparation. So we've um, pulled up and you know, heavily been, been rewarded today. Do you have any thoughts? You've got to enjoy the moment, of course, but looks like it's going to be a hot new market. Is there any reason to think we might see him in the next of our great sprints? Yeah, possibly. Look, obviously, new market or the Galaxy was sort of on the radar as well. So, look, we'll just let the dust settle. We'll celebrate tonight and we'll go from there. Let's go and check in on Ben Thompson. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait to hear from Ben. Speaks so eloquently as well. And obviously, uh, a moment that he will absolutely cherish. And it was a great race, Ben. I mean, it really lived up to all the expectations, I, I think, right across the board. And, you know, it, not easy to sort of pick these ones up. Pressure would have been on today. And I think the fact that he knew a little bit about the horse, obviously, a really good booking, an even better booking now after the race. Yeah, and he had the... So, that little bit of fitness improvement, uh, the weight swing, he's had a couple of kilos off Lofty Strike from last time, but more significant than any of that, I think was how he jumped. He was the best out of the gates today on Tom and James, which just gave Ben Thompson some options. He was yep. able to put him nearer to the speed, whereas Lofty Strike, the runner-up, who was probably the run of the race, he just was, he was a long way back. He didn't bring it up well, and he was inside of, I think he had the astrologist on his outside, who was being a bit of a pest. He had to barge his way into the clear, and then he had to make a really long run, whereas Ben Thompson was able to sit there, wait, watch his target in zoo style, pick him off and just have enough of a gap over the fast finishing lofty strikes. Asura was fantastic. Asura. Yep. I mean, Henry has got to be happy with that performance. She's run a bottle. Is she a thousand metre specialist? No, she, she gets 1100, no doubt. She'll win yep. the rider 1100 metre race, but at the absolute elite level is a thousand perfect for it. Yeah, you tend to think that... Maybe um, a Moya next spring. Yeah, maybe the Moya might be their target. I yep. mean, she's better over, I think, uh, over that thousand where, um, you know, she can say catch me if you can, but no, that was a, that was a good effort from her, no doubt. And, Fresh is always a very good spot for her as well. King of Sparta coming up the insides, run really well for fourth. Um, you had Zoo Style hanging on for fifth. He's, you know, he is a thousand metre yep. horse and he's run really well here. They were running some some quick times. Uh, and I suppose the same form line, chain of lightning, beaten a few lengths. I didn't. I need to have another look. We've only seen it once or twice, but yep. you know, I, I thought chain of lightning probably out of that form reference with Lofty Strike and Common James was the one that just was a little bit below. Yeah, there was so much to watch. I'm going to need to watch this <laughs> replay five or six times, Hutch, and dissect everything for the wrap tomorrow morning. But let's get to Ben Thompson and see uh, how he is after this big Group 1 victory. Ben Thompson, Group 1 winning jockey, joins us. Ben, it's an emotional moment for so many reasons. You've changed the trajectory of your life and headed to Queensland. You're probably thinking that a Doobin 10,000 or a Stradbroke might be the first one, but it's come in an iconic Oakley plate. What does it mean? Oh, it, mean it means so much. It means everything. I, um, sorry, Nigel. I'm a, I'm a mess and I get that from my mother that's here. So, um, I'm far out. It's... Obviously, it's one thing I'm sure that every jockey dreams on, but not many, you know, get to put their like have, have a Group One winning rider next to their name, and it um it's yeah it's it's so lucky. Oh, sorry, it's it's honestly it's just just the way things have panned out. Like Uncommon James, is a horse I've had a lot to do with. I rode him in his first ever first ever jump out with other horse out of the barriers, and I've ridden him three times in Queensland for three wins, and just almost at the turn of events and getting the ride at last hour, you could say after Rock and Horse. Um, missed, the, missed the lightning to run today. Thank God it did and dropped the weight so I was able to ride him and oh, just a huge thanks to obviously Stephen O'Day, Matt Hoisted, Caitlin Lavin, or now Hoisted and, and Peter Lavin, the entire Lavin family for the ride and obviously Stephen and Matt, they've been a huge supporter of mine since making the move north and made riding winners a lot easier because their horses are so good and just for it to happen here, it's so special. Like it's, I've, I've learned to ride and um, so I've done my entire apprenticeship in Victoria. Um, Oh, sorry, I'm struggling between two words together. Just for it to happen here, it's, it's almost meant to be. Um, and yeah, it's just amazing. Just a huge, obviously, 
thanks to, the, as I said, Stephen O'Day, Matt Hoist, the Lavin family, um, my beautiful wife Steph, who I'm sure should be in, should be a mess, and I'm sure I got him home screaming. My parents, my mum and little sister are, are here today, and just I've got such a, a such a great team behind me. Sorry, Nigel, I've taken over here. Uh, to, you're as eloquent as a man who's won 100 Group Ones, Ben. But talk us through the run, and particularly dealing with the optical illusion of the makeshift winning post 80 metres past the normal one. Yeah, it was different. And even like speaking to riders that had, had ridden, ridden in the race or ridden over this course, um, they said it, it's so unusual just because they're not used to it. But I pretty much just told myself to ride at the end of the turn. And my only plan, I thought if I'm, if I'm still travelling at the at the pole, which is usually 200 to go, it's just under 300 today, that I'm probably going to win. And honestly, in the run, I told myself I, I was going pretty good then. I thought, I'm going to win here. And then I felt Asfura come up and I was thinking, bugger off, Joy. But um, no, if I already pulled through, he's a, he's a really good horse. I'm going to hear a lot more around Common James. And while I'm here still here, I just want to, a big thank you to my manager, Glenn Courtney. He does a super job behind the scenes and helps, you know, makes me look good with the rise he gets me. And um, those that have started me off, uh, I'm sorry, and, and should I say Danny Beasley, he's, a, he's been my biggest mentor, one of my biggest mentors since doing a sit in in Singapore. And he's also one of my best mates. So um, he helps me day in and day out on the track and off the track. And um, yeah, it's just amazing. And more history to come tonight. You might be the first man to win an Oakley Plate and then take the trophy out to the Meadows. Good luck at the dogs tonight. Well done on your first group one. Thank you, Nigel. Hopefully. Thank you. Julius, so close, but uh, not quite close enough with Lofty Strike today. Uh, what were your initial thoughts on his performance? Um, you can't not be proud. I mean, uh, he's run out of his skin. He's come second in a group one. I mean, he's a star. The horse is he's giving it his, his all. He's still learning. He's only lightly raced. And... Uh, uh, you know, we probably um, ended up two pairs a bit closer. He makes the tie finish a bit tighter, but that's racing. And um, Craig's given him a, the best ride he could. The horse has run out of his skin. He's, as long as he's pulled up okay, um, that's the most important thing. I know I've got a good horse and his time will come. Uh, take him back home and make sure that he's um, healthy and happy and he does everything right back home. And uh, hopefully in two weeks we'll see him down the straight.